Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn how to create stamps. We can find our stamps by going to the Tools dropdown, mousing over Stamp, and here's a list of all of our stamps. We can create a new stamp, or we can import a stamp. A stamp is essentially a regular PDF file, but it also contains dynamic data. Let's make a stamp similar to the AR reviewed stamp that I've made previously. So we'll click on Create Stamp. The subject line determines what text will initially appear on our stamp. So let's type in AR denied, and our template will determine how that text is shown and if it's shown with other assets, such as borders, dates, and a rounded border. We're going to be using the text with date and border. This date will be our first dynamic markup. Then we can change our width and our height. We'll change our height to two inches. We can change our blend mode, which determines how our stamp is going to appear. Let's leave it at normal for now. And we can change our opacity, rotation, text color, and the color of the lines on our stamp. Let's click OK. Here's our brand new stamp, and here's our subject line. We can click on it, and we can look at it in properties. It's just a regular text box. Let's click on our stamp's border. It's just a regular rectangle. If we needed to resize our stamp manually, we can use these blue grips at the corners and we can drag them in and out. I prefer to set my stamp size initially when creating my stamp. That way you can keep it at whatever parameters you set initially. Now below the subject line, we can see that there's one more text box and we can see that there's two sets of dynamic data within the box. Let's double click inside of the text box. Now we can see that there's a new dropdown in the bottom left this is called the dynamic dropdown. We can click on it and we can see lots of different choices. For example, we can choose to specify the user, the file's name, the file's name without its extension, the file's path, along with other choices on this list. Let's get rid of the time data. And if you needed to make your own data, you can use the and symbol, brackets, input the data's name, it's case sensitive, and not all words will work, so you'll need to look up from a library of different dynamic data. And then you can close the brackets right here. So now that we've done that, let's press escape. Now let's move our text a little bit to the right. I'm holding shift to keep it alongside the horizontal axis. Now let's make a new one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a copy of this one. That way I get its size and font. I'm then going to paste it. Let's put it right around here. And let's double click inside of it. We're going to get rid of the date. We're going to click on the dynamic dropdown. And this time, let's choose file. All right. And now we have the file name ready to go. That position is decent. Let's move it a little bit to the right. And then when we're done, we can save our stamp. Now, before saving, you don't necessarily want to save the stamp because it's going to be saved in the default stamp folder. I recommend that you do a file and then a save as. And this is the default stamp folder right now. It's pretty deep inside of program data. So instead of going there, I'm just going to save this in my documents. Now it's saved, and I need to now import it into review. Let's close out of our stamp, and let's go back to our floor plan. We'll find our stamp by going to the Tools dropdown, mousing over Stamp, and it's not quite on the list yet. That's because we still need to import it to Bluebeam Review. So we can then click on Import Stamp, we can find it in our Documents folder. Here it is, it's just a regular PDF file. And let's click on Open. Nothing seems to have happened, but if we go back to the Tools dropdown and mouse over Stamp, we can now see our stamp in the list. This list is in alphabetical order. Let's place our stamp on our sheet by going to the Tools dropdown, Stamp. We can click on our stamp, and we can click and hold and drag our stamp to resize it on the fly, or we can simply just click and it'll come out at its original size. Now, we can see that we have a few issues with this stamp from the get-go. The date didn't quite fill itself in fully, and the name of our file didn't complete itself either. And that's because the text boxes for those two parameters aren't large enough to fit them. So that means we need to modify our stamp and make those text boxes bigger. We'll also need to make our stamp bigger as well. If we try to drag the stamp right here on our drawing, it's just going to stretch the whole thing, so we don't want to do that. We're going to go to Edit and Undo. So let's edit our stamp by going to the Tools dropdown, 
mousing over stamp, then we can mouse over our stamp and we can see that this little pencil icon appears. Let's click on the pencil icon. Now we can modify our date. Let's make the box for date a little bit bigger. We'll stretch it up to about here. And we're not going to have enough room for our file, so we would need to stretch our stamp to make it bigger. For now, we're not going to do that. We're just going to close and save our stamp. And now, let's insert it one more time so we can delete this stamp. We now need to go back to our Tools drop-down. Mouse over Stamp. Here it is. Let's now place it. And there we go. Our date fits very nicely, and we'll just need to make a bigger stamp if we want to fit in the file name, or we can make our font size a little bit smaller. Thank you very much for watching our tutorial on dynamic stamps. Once again, my name is Ari, I'm with Digital Drafting Systems, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.